Hello there. Hey. Can you hear me well? I can hear you well, yes. Yeah, great. Could you send me a message on the HTML Mario account or join the channel HTML Mario's Factory? Uh, chat channel or, or group? Chat channel. It's a group. Okay. Mario's or Mario Factory? Mario's with an apostrophe S. You can just type in Mario and in the group search and it'll pop me up. Oh, there, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Alright, so you wanted to focus on TVT and TVZ, correct? Yeah, I like, I, if you have more time, you can go to TVP as well. But, but it's like TVP is the only matchup that I'm still not really confident with in with Bio. Yeah. Uh, so I just w want to like make sure I, I get it right with Bio first, and before I start to mix in more elements in TVP right now. Mm -hmm. But in both TVT and TVC, I'm doing pretty well. So. And you do a lot of mech in TVT? No, I just started. Okay. Actually. So. Uh, I got crushed by a guy playing mech, and I thought I w w wanted to try it myself, and mm. I instantly crushed another guy with it, so... Sounds and good. I'm not even sure I'm doing it right yet, but it was pretty fun to play. Yeah. Well, um, I want to start off by showing you my best Terran against Terran strategy. Um, yeah. This is the correct way to learn it. Um, it's got a neat transition in it. There's some very neat tricks in it. And just this game, and I'll send you the replay right before we start too. So you can reference to this anytime. It's in Skype. And um, so what this strategy focuses on is map control and being overall safe. So it puts a lot of... You know, it gives you a lot of opportunity to see lots of things around the map, so you can see things incoming. You just have to keep your eye on the mini map uh, frequently. So it's yeah. it's great for teaching you that. And another thing it does is uh, it's very very safe. As long as you do the build correctly, there is nothing you should die to because of a build order loss. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'm actually pretty good at watching the mini map, at least for someone at my level. Yeah. Because I even like I watch the minimap more than I watch anything else probably. Well that's definitely good. That's a hard skill to master. I've gone ahead and started it, if you could just hit accept. Yeah. Let's go ahead and watch this. So this is uh, against a e Grandmaster player that I have I think I've beaten three or four times now with the exact same strategy. He's he's pretty talented. He's really good. I think he's top fifty grandmaster. Yeah, I think so, I recognize him from some streams. Yep. Yeah. So what we're gonna see here is um, a perfect way to open up. Uh, this is called the 4GG opener, and it has my own little twist on it with a different style of Mac. So you could do either, you know, hit branch off his, into his section or into my section. But I'm a really big fan of mixing in Widow Mind, something he doesn't do nearly as often. Now, on 10 supply, you know, with your 9th SCV, the moment you make another one, you'll be at 10 supply. You send that SCV to the front and make a supply depot. We always want one supply depot at the front so we can see things coming in advance, but we never want more than one unless we're building a bunker, uh, just in case there's like a, a proxy, like a marauder proxy, you know, like right here. Yeah, yeah. So we don't lose three buildings. Our two buildings in an add-on, so we only lose one supply depot. Then we build a barracks right next to the command center. It doesn't have to be that close, and we scout with the SUV that made the supply depot. Uh, the barracks is made at 12 supply, and then at 13 supply, even just barely being 14 supply, you can get a gas geyser. Uh, or sorry, 15 supply. I'm thinking of my Terran against Bordas. <laughs> <laughs> so, 14 to 15 supply, we get a gas geyser. So you can see I already rallied, and then I'm going to switch over to 15 supply, and I'll make the gas geyser right there. About the exact same time as his, 
So you can see the builds are very close. I think he does a similar build as well. And we own, we both put our own little spin on it. So let's take a look here. Now the moment you reach 15 supply, you it's it's best to make a normal command. I mess up a little bit here by letting the sixth the sixteenth SCV finish. Uh, you want the orbital command as soon as possible. I was a little bit focused on the SCV. And since yeah. he blocked me off, I was gonna make. I think this is the one where I put an engineering bay next to his barracks, just in case he was gonna drop an add-on right away. But that was yeah, nice. I noticed this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there are two variations we can do back at the reactor. We can either get three marines first and then a reactor. Or a reactor uh, after the first marine if we're very positive that it's not a cheese, or a reaper. Now yeah, since yeah. we, yeah, and since we saw two marines, uh, we know it's not a reaper. Right, so another supply depot. I get one a little early, and then a command center. So, uh, after the command center is dropped down and the reactor is finished, we start a factory, and then we begin marine production once again. So ultimately, your goal is to be in between five to seven marines by the time your factory finishes. Okay. And here's another supply depot, because our command center was a little bit late, so we're going to need another supply depot to make more marines. This is what happens when you make this, the third supply depot before, I believe it's the third supply depot. No, this is what happens when you make the second supply depot before the command center. Uh, you'll need yeah. a third supply depot before it finishes. Otherwise, oh, you'll yeah. have it after it finishes. But still, it's relatively the same timing on the expansions. So it doesn't matter too much. No, oh, no. Then what we're going to do is swap the add-ons. We're going to make two Hellions, and we're going to keep making Marines. We can go up to eight Marines total. We have about five right now, so only three more, and then we make a Starport. Uh, there's different ways you can branch off here. You can go, okay, I'm going to get a second gas, and if you get a second gas, you're probably going to take the Raven or Sooner Factories and so on. Or, um, But you can't keep Marine production up if you do that. So it's you attack a little bit faster, but you're a little bit weaker to counterattacks. So mm -hmm. I like to go ahead and go for the Marines. This makes me relatively safe. Now your starport timing is about the same timing as their starport should be, uh, if they are getting one. Uh, you can see ours is beforehand, because he's he's uh, going for health hat drops, he's getting his armory. Yeah. Uh, I do like to make sure I have the watchtower, at least send some Marines to, out, uh, Marines to send out. So I'm a really big fan of map vision. Um, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> so what we're going to see here is um, one strategy is that when you're at about, you know, when you can get up to 46 supply and you have some leeway before you need to make another supply depot, I like to send a worker here or here and make a supply depot. Yeah. Um, same thing in this direction. Now my key points on this map, for example, are directions on where I think the dropship would go. So each exclamation mark that I'm going to show you on the map is where I end up building a supply depot. each one of these. Yeah, yeah. Now if he goes ahead and kills them, like you'll see this game, I know where his army is, I know what's coming, so I can't be surprised. Uh, if you combine this vision with the watchtower, I can see everything on the map, and again, I can't be surprised. And since we're playing kind of safe and greedy, uh, it's definitely good to know where everything's going, and it's worth it to lose one supply depot over to, you know, a hell bad drop to where he goes, oh fuck, I have to kill this depot, and then retreat because there's another one right up there. So it's worth it to lose one supply depot over losing, let's say, five workers. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll see me doing that throughout the entire game. And uh, we'll tap through the vision uh, in different parts of the game. Like, even if you look now, look at the vision he sees. So all he knows is that we've gone for an early command center. And he doesn't know... We could be right outside of his base and he'd have no idea. If we look good at what I see... Uh, we can see that I have the watchtowers because he, he isn't fighting for them, he's not contested. A lot of lower league players don't contest for the watchtowers enough. And uh, if these marines were to die, we would send our hellions out to clear it up and then send another marine. That's another yeah. bonus to making more marines, is we can use them to stand at the watchtowers after the hellions clean it up. 
so we can use the real army, the Hellions, to move around the map. Yeah. Is okay. this game from today? Yes, I played this this yeah. morning. Oh, I, thought, I think I've seen it on stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought I recognized it. <laughs> it's a really, really good game. It's, um, what's it called? It's really good at defending and it's really good at, like, I play this almost perfectly. Um, from here we can do multiple things once the starport is about to finish. We can go to we think it's going to be Cloak Banshee or Widowmine drops. If it is, uh, we can save our energy and drop a, uh, an engineering bay around the 6 minute and 45 second mark. We can do that. Maybe even the 6 minute 30 second mark. Uh, we can go into a Raven. But there's a few different things that we can do. So let's go ahead and send this out. And you can see there's the first supply depot right on top of where the dot was. Well, there's a storm coming. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, I can. It's a pretty big storm. Yeah. So here he goes contesting for the watchtower. He kills the marine with two hellions. And uh, I don't bother retreating the other one. It doesn't matter. I can see the hellion count when he goes and kills it. And I cut off his hellions a little bit here. Not the biggest deal, it's a good thing to have your Hellions in the front split up in case his Hellions come run in, and then move them behind if he pushes in for the attack behind the Marines so they take the damage. Yeah. Transferring a few workers over, we only want 16 mining at a time, preferably. Uh, you can see that the vision is really starting. Now anything in this direction, it only has one area, very slim area that he can move through that I can't see to get to my main. And you can see the supply depots are starting up here now too. Yeah. Now, so this works really well because until we're at three bases, we only really need two supply depots at a time. And if you build them a little faster than you need them, you can afford to lose one or two of them. So a lot of people ask me, well, Mario, don't you just lose supply, get supply blocked, and then it's not worth it? Not really. Uh, you'll notice that throughout the game, my supplies, the amount of depots I need is actually higher than what I have. So right now, I'm, I need a supply depot, I have one building, and I have another one that's about to be built as well. So, Also send a marine out here, since my vision hasn't spread down there yet. Get an extra chance to spot something. It's an extra marine, so why not? I send a marine down here, an extra chance to spot something, see if it's third base is up. Now back at home, you can see that the starport has finished. Um, I didn't, since I see so much around the map, and I can see any Banshee coming in advance, I delayed my engineering bay, and I'm going for two factories. So I'm definitely yeah. not worried about Banshee. I have one Viking. I'm not making any more right now, and I'm starting a tech lab on the barracks. This is simply to transfer over to the starport, I believe. Yeah. So um, uh, some of the things you can do is, uh, your goal is to get up to three factories. Two with tech labs, one with reactor. The reason why two with tech labs is because we want to get uh, upgrades. Uh, we can keep producing Hellions, but just in case we need to make siege tanks, the production's already there. In case we need to make a Thor, the production's there. We don't need to get too many Hellions because then we won't have the minerals to make supply depots or expand if they were reactors. Yeah. And we also want a... At the beginning, we want a tech lab on the starport so we can make ravens, vikings, or banshees depending on what we need. And if the opponent makes a lot of bio, we make uh, like one or two ravens and then go into banshees after having like one or two vikings so that they can have time to kill the medevacs. And then the banshees can shoot down on the ground, just an extra attacking unit. And then against mech players who are getting a lot of, a lot of vikings, we want to react around vikings and get a thor, just in case. So those are some different situations in how we would use the starport. Yeah. Pretty soon we do want all four gas. We don't need it quite yet though, but um, once I have my factories up, I end up getting them. See, so there they go. So my factories yeah. are, are up and now I get all three of them. Up until this stage we haven't really needed the gas. And since we're also not 100% sure, we haven't seen anything from its base until just now. So now we see it moving up, but just right before, um, I didn't see anything, so I started missile turrets in my mineral line. The reason why yeah. is because um, if he hasn't moved out by this time, he, he could definitely go for some other type of harass. So if he moves out, I know what's coming and I can position, but the only thing that can really surprise me is a drop that I don't see yet. Um, my supply depots can see a lot, but they can't see everything yet, especially since I don't have the one here. Um, that's a, a, a blind spot that he can move through. 
Yeah. So since we have so good vision, we see exactly what's coming. Two help at drops. And um, from this situation, we can go, okay, uh, w with a singular drop, what you want to do is keep some army in the front, just in case you're trying to send some Hellions in. Um, unless you have total map control, then that's not a problem. But if you don't know what's in front, you want to take just enough to handle the drop and leave the rest in your front. Because more often than not, um, whatever kills the drop, you know, whatever you have left over that's not attacking with the drop, probably matches what he has outside of your base. Yeah, so, exactly. it should, so it should keep it pretty even. So what we do here is uh, the the goal of killing hell bad drops, or yeah, hell bad drops in general are the scariest drops. So the goal of killing any drop is to get the medevac um, without losing the unit that kills it. You know, like the Viking, because the hell bats can't be healed. They can't speed boost out. Same thing with like a marine heligan drop because they they can't speed boost out. The marines can't be healed. Uh, so we always want to make sure we can kill the medevac. So we a missile turret in the mineral line, one of the reasons I don't cancel this is because it'll help me shoot down the medevac if, if he's trying to go for my SCVs, allowing the Hellions yeah. to kill them much faster. So you can see, I split up my Hellions. I pick my army about even. Yeah, exactly. And he does clear the watchtower. So now... Let's watch this in slower motion. You can see that he's going there. He can't drop into the main because of the missile turret. Yeah. He's going there now, but you can see over here. Uh, we killed the medevac pretty fast. And stop that drop. And then in the main he's got he's got nothing in the main anymore, we killed it. Yeah, that was good. So we lost three workers total. Uh, not that big of a deal. He lost a lot of units. If you go to his losses, 950 to 356. Yeah, I see. So, that's one way you can really stop the drops. After that, you have to re-secure your positions. So, we'll be getting the watchtowers in a second. Our uh, SCVs are still on the map on patrol. It's okay to have two out there. So, um, I keep them on patrol so they don't go idle. So, they also watch, you know, um, the area and then I can grab them uh, throughout the game. And you can see I'm getting the watchtowers now. So I can use them to really scout in different directions. I, I sacrifice a little bit of economy for a lot of information. Yeah. And you can see help at drop here. So that's definitely been worth it. I now know that there are two medevacs with two help at out. So more often than not, it, it, he's really, really uh, help at heavy. We've seen, you know, four right here. And another four earlier, that's eight, and then two medevacs, another two medevacs, that's a huge investment in the hellbat drops. And since we have these SCVs on you know, on patrol, we can now use this SCV on the left side to remake the supply depot and then go back to his previous position. Yeah. <laughs> so even more annoying. Yeah. <laughs> if we take a quick look at his map, as a his vision, if you hit one, you can see the only thing he sees is the hellbat drops and nothing outside of his base. Yeah, exactly. Now, if we tapped in my vision, there's almost no way to surprise me. Yeah. Wow. So in here, I just make sure I caught off his hellbat drop. I know nothing else is coming. That's where uh, he probably doesn't have much more supply than that. You know, he does have a few units behind, but I would doubt it if he had any more medevacs out right now, and he doesn't. So yeah, back at the base, uh, we also. But, uh, right around the same time we started Tech Labs, we want our Armory so we can get the upgrades, preferably slightly before, so we can start the Blue Flame right away. You can see I have a decent amount of gas because I got those four geysers at a time, and I dumped a lot of stuff into Hellions. So this allows me to play very gas heavy. I can get uh, any upgrade I want, and you know still produce units. We also, once our three factories are finished, we want to kind of keep producing one factory at a time to go all the way up to five factories. And once we're at five factories, we definitely want to drop down an or uh, a command center to make into an orbital command. So we're delaying our, our macro a little bit by not grabbing an early third, so we can be safe, get a few more Hellions out, get a few more factories out so we can produce more units, and then get our third base. No. Do you have any questions so far? Or, or do you like the build so far? Do you have anything to add to it? Or? No, no, I, I like it. I watched the game before also on stream and I think it's pretty cool. 
Right. Let's keep I, going. I really like the vision part. <laughs> you like the what first? The vision part, having so much vision to see everything. It helps a lot, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a huge help. And doing those types of things, like moving around the map, uh, having, the, having the vision and stuff, those types of things will help you become a faster player. It'll help you, like, you have to give yourself goals. Okay, you have to make this, 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 and this, this. And you might feel overwhelmed at the start, but you do for a week or two or a month, you know, you really get in the habit of it. You'll notice that you'll become a much faster player because instead of just looking at your SCVs, uh, you'll go, okay, I know my build order. I don't have to think about that. So you just do the build order, and then you go, I put this here, I put this here, I put this here, and then after a few games, you look over the replay and say, how far was I away? Oh, let's see if I can do it a little faster. Yeah. And, and then eventually you'll just become a much faster player through a sheer amount of muscle memory. Yeah. So that's one thing I also noticed. That I noticed there was a lot more things I could do at the start, and that's when I started the Supply Depot thing. To keep myself busy and make myself faster. So... Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Really good idea. So let's keep going here. Now, we have a decent sound sized amount of Hellions. Around the 11 minute mark, you can crush most armies with this amount of Hellions and a few Vikings. Now, you do want to keep some tab on what's going on, and I see the Widow Mines going out. I just try to snipe one of them. I know one of them is going in the direction of where my fourth would be. I'm not concerned with that. I don't want the one going to my third. So I can kill the fourth one later. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I mean, it's already going to burrow and I don't have a scan, so... So what we do from here is I get Widow Mind Burrow. I decide, you know what, instead of the Blue Flame Hellion, which you can do, by the way, but I was thinking, instead of the Blue Flame Hellion, I'm going to throw even more icing on this cake. And that's something I've been doing, and I can see the drops here, by the way. And that's something I've been doing uh, for a little bit of time. So I, I think that I have to switch into Siege Tank soon. But first, I'm going to make one or two rounds of Widow Mines, and I'm going to plant them around his base. This is going to force a scan, this is going to pick off some units, this is going to make him terrified to move out without a Raven. Yeah. So it definitely can do some damage. We also get a Raven ourselves. Uh, even if he has a Raven, if he just walks over it without attacking, or the Raven's a little bit far behind, or two up in front, the Raven will die, or units will die, and if a Widow Mine kills anything, it's worth it. And as a mech army, which we know he has, they do lots of damage to Hellions, uh, they do decent amount of damage to Hellbats, and if the Widow Mine gets to fire on a tank, it half-shuts the tank, pretty much. Yeah. So it makes it much easier, uh, gives us, again, more vision, and they're they're pretty dirt cheap. So I see his drop again, and I go ahead and go intercept it with my army. I know there's nothing on the left side. I have total vision there, so no problem. Uh, once the SCV dies, I'm like, you know what, let's retreat for a second, because we're not sure. There is some dead space. I forgot this supply depot. So if I had it, I could see the Vikings move out. Or as it stands right now, I'm not sure where he is, so I stay close to my base on, the, on, on my expo, because I know he's not in the main. And here's the second run of Widow Mines, and you can see I always have one factory building at a time, at up to five, and I have the plus attack going. You want to at least make it a plus two attack. Once you're at plus two attack, you can kill siege tanks in three shots instead of fours. You do want to keep going after those, but at least plus two attack. Yeah. So we poke out a little bit because we still haven't seen anything, and then we poke back. There's nothing there. Alright. Uh, we also send our marines out to watch, since we didn't have the supply depots, and we don't need the marines anymore. Yeah, I noticed. And we have this cute little bunker here, with that SCV that's been idling there the whole game. So once again, useful. Now with <laughs> uh, Orbital Command, we were effectively killing SCVs while this is in the air. And he has to go send some Hellbats over there to clean it up. So the amount of time it takes to get there and actually kill it. We've killed like one or two SCVs with 100 minerals, so definitely worth it. Yeah. Back at the base, we go ahead and make another factory. So now we're going up to six. Th uh, is it? Is it six? Yeah, this is six. So the reason why it's six is because we have our command center already building, and we can go up to seven factories on three bases. We just haven't moved the base yet. Yeah. Uh, six is also a pretty good number to kind of stay at. I noticed a lot of Vikings, so you can see now the starport is on a reactor. I have a I have three tech labs, so I can make tanks, and the rest will probably be react or uh, the rest will probably be tech labs as well. 
two tech labs, three... I have three tech labs, two reactors, and then more tech labs. Um, I saw him yeah. drop over here, so again, every time he moves out with a drop... Yeah. Every time he moves out with a drop, I go ahead and try to intercept it. Just to ca keep him away from my base. You know, we don't want him reaching our workers. And you can also see that the widow mines that I had earlier, I have them now in position. In two different locations. I also have one at his fourth base. So three different locations. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons this is really good is now if he moves down the ramp and he overextends a little bit up on either side, you know, these are the places I don't have vision is right in front of his base. So now I do. So if you look at his vision and my vision again, huge difference. Yeah. So the widow mines, you'll you'll yeah. see them actually being useful in a second too. Alright, so now over here I scan ahead, you always, as a mech, ter as a mech player, you always want to scan ahead to know what's coming. If you yeah. don't, you'll catch yourself off guard. Uh, you, you almost never want to move out without having a uh, vision in front of you, you know, in some sense of another. It, it's kind of scary, unless you're 100% sure, it's kind of scary. Yeah. So, since we have some more Widow Mines here, and he's got a lot of hel Hellions, we're gonna burn the Widow Mines, and you can see them doing massive amounts of damage. Uh. Now I did make a mistake, and I let my Raven die without dropping two out of turrets. Some of my Hellbats were a little bit, or my Hellions were a little bit clumped. And uh, little bits of mistake, but we have enough of an army back home. Uh, you know, once we decided we had enough Hellions, we made Siege Tanks and a few Widow Mines. Now we're going back into Hellion Siege Tank production with Blue Flame. And you got two extra shots there as well. With yep. the Widow Mines down here. Yep, and the Widow Mines, they're still not dead. Like, you could stay and scan and kill them, but that's another scan. Um, yeah. So, uh, they're now still useful at being in front of his base. And here it comes up. You know, we, we did a, a little bit of a wall with Siege Tank, so this is a great way to get your third base. Uh, you do make a siege tank line like this. Uh, you, I, I would have put one more over here, and that would have made five siege tanks cover most areas, and the rest of my army would have been unseaged, so I can move them into whatever position needed help. Yeah. So without knowing, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is coming. Uh, I'm not sure how close it's, he's going to be before he gets in position, but without knowing that, I already set up to take my third. I have the third command center. Uh, plus two attack is going to be on the way in a second. And you can see I haven't really needed any more missile turrets because of the map vision. Yeah. But yeah, and since we have some extra widow mines, they're really, really good against hellions when you know hellions run over them. As you can tell here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no problems. Uh, you know, you want enough siege tanks to kind of match his siege tank count. Uh, he doesn't yeah. have any right now, and w we're positive uh, he could have had the potential to have some, so we just got some in case. Uh, you don't need too many until it's, the army supplies c become a lot higher and you're battling for ground. Uh, it's easier to abuse positions without uh, with Hellions, so... But now, at, at this stage, we're, we're going into heavy Hellbat Siege Tank. And yeah. the reason for this being is we only need a few minute widow mines. We don't need too many. We just want some for map control. Now, what kills him this game a lot is the vision. And you yeah, can see these blue, these being useful again, getting even more kills. Yeah. See. So, yeah, the vision. If you look at his vision again, still he has no idea of where anything is except for his widow mines. So he doesn't know if a counterattack is coming. He could greatly benefit from a sensor tower. If you look at my vision, I know exactly where his army is and what he has. Yeah. <laughs> and his army is pretty damaged standing on there. So, as as a mech Terran, you in every matchup this is hugely important. You want to know where his army always is and what it consists of, so you can make the counter. Uh, he doesn't yeah. have that, and that's what kills him. So while he's over there, as I mentioned, if he's killing my vision his army's out of position, I know where he is, and, and I can abuse that. And that's the same thing you should focus on, because that's what I do right here. I was I was on the opposite side of his army. Um, I still have some siege tanks back at home to defend. I have a little wall right here with a command center, a missile turret, and a supply depot. 
so that should buy me some time. I have uh, all my reinforcements rallied to right here, so I can easily defend because I have him rallied to that side because that's where he'll most likely try to counterattack if he does try to counterattack. Yeah. And from here, we don't have any vision in this area, and this is scary. So what we do is we send the widow mines up there just to be safe. Yeah. We siege up, and it's pretty much game over from here. Even though he's ahead in supply right now, if you look at the army supply, he's at uh, control A. Uh, he's at 72 army supply, I'm at 69, so he's actually uh, three more supplies stronger than I am army-wise. He has quite a few more SCVs, uh, but you don't need that many. So uh, overall his army is stronger, it's just that we're already in position. And when he comes up, I scan as soon as the widow mines die so I can keep the vision. Yeah. Do as much damage as I can. You have to focus fire the units, not the SCVs. Which is what I'm doing. You can see my siege tanks are, are keep changing the direction they're firing. That's me manually targeting it off. And from there it's game over. So um, back at home, you know the wall was going up. We got the gas geysers first as you can tell. Another yeah. command center because we felt like we could get away with it. And uh, we started missile turret rings uh, so that mass doom drops can't affect us. Uh, yeah. It's usually the rule is when you have a third base, you want a missile turret ring just to be safe. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's pretty much in every matchup where I do that. If you have a third base, you want a missile turret ring, except for TVZ. Uh, unless I think drops are coming or mutalisks, then I don't get a missile turret ring. Yeah. Do you have any questions about TVT right now and how to hold off specific things or or uh, any anything else? Uh, not that I can think of. This was a little bit different than I did it. I it went like straight into Halbert and Tank. Mm. Uh, but I, I really see why Hellions are really effective. Yeah. So especially early game and early mid game too. Yeah, when, when you have a lot of Hellions, um, and they're really marine heavy and you have blue flame, you'll decimate, decimate him. Um, yeah. When they have a lot of Marauders, you want Siege Tanks and Ravens and Manjis. But um, up until that stage, unt until the stage where they have Siege Tanks, and only if they have a lot of them, you know, or uh, Marauders, you, you can live off of just Hellions. And the goal is to, sub to use only Hellions. Uh, as map control so you can crush any small army like if he moves out with a few siege tanks and a few marines you can still kill that with a good amount of hellions because once the marines die you just run the tanks yeah and then you're killing gas units for mineral units so and if you have a large hellion supply you can get the transformation service and boom they're all hellbats and you just make mass tank you don't make any more hellbats and uh, you just make like siege tank and medevacs and you have this crazy, crazy army because you already had so many Hellions. And like, if this battle never took place, and both of us got the transformation servos upgrade, we'd have huge amounts of Hellbats battling each other in the late game. Yeah. So, um, this style is very strong, and it's definitely the one that I would recommend you use TVT at least until you get to medium masters, because uh, then it's really going to be a little bit of an issue. Um, against the same players over and over again, you know, uh, unless you play it really well. But it's a really great strategy to do, to really learn Terran against Terran. Some of the timings you should know, though, are like Banshees could be your base is 7 minutes and 30 seconds, so kind of make sure you know what he's doing. Uh, you can definitely yeah. drop a scan on his base at like 7 minutes, just to be sure. Uh, he doesn't yeah. hurt you that much, you get like a few less Hellions, but uh, you can also see all lens. If there's like a Marauder proxy, you know what you would do is you can drop a uh, you can drop a second barracks. You can pull some SUVs and kill the marauders before uh, you know they get concussive shells. You can drop a bunker at the front of your base the moment you scout that. This is why I scout right after the first supply depot, so that by the time I reach his base, I know there has to be a barracks uh, at least halfway done. And if there isn't, yeah. then I drop a bunker at the front. Uh, against like SUV all ins with marines just wall off as long as the SUVs can't reach your marines it's not a problem wall off maybe put a bunker behind but you don't want to put the bunker in front you want to put the bunker behind you don't want to give the SUVs the ability to attack yeah uh,
I'm trying to think of anything else that might be useful. I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah, I have a pretty good idea in TVT what could hit me. Like, TVT is my best matchup. I have like 73% win rate or something. That's very good. Yeah, so, and I use Banshees and stuff a lot myself, so I know when, when they come and Reapers too. Yeah. Uh, Alright, and um, there you go. Did you want to cover TVZ now? Did you have an example, or is there a really a build you want to go over? instead. Uh, let's see here. I can show you my TVT quick. Yeah, so we can, can definitely see, do that. See if there are like, I know the builds now and so uh, more like why you get Hellions before Hellbats and such, but there might still be some some additional tips you can give on that. Let's see. Okay. I think it's this one. Would you I mind giving me? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, there we go. Makes it much easier to go over aspects of the replay. Yeah, it's really annoying when you have to tell someone to bounce and tell someone to all the time. This guy was actually plat platinum last season, so felt pretty good. He he went mass marine though against my mech. He didn't scout my composition at all, so I guess I was a little bit lucky here too. But that was good since I kind of freestyle this mech since I haven't played it before. Yeah. I I did kind of the same build that, that I did for TVC. Like I got the uh, a Rax uh, with reactor and switched it up and got an armory and started producing halibuts from there. So And a few Hellions first to scout, like scout the map and harass him a bit. Yeah. Um, I don't really like building the barracks at the front. It's a great thing if you suspect an all-in. Um, yeah. I, I know that like uh, like Flash does it as an example, but um, he knows the exact timings of when to scout yeah. for like Marauders and stuff. I'd heavily recommend making it back here, just in case, because if they get like three Marauders and they lift the barracks up, they can hit yeah. all three of the things at the front. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and if you see like they're pulling SUVs, which you, sh you should try to keep an idea of where he's on the map. Like maybe keep like a worker here uh, when you think attacks might be coming, and then maybe like a worker here on patrol. It still yeah. gives you time to wall off with two supply depots. Not completely, but at least get the wall going. Yeah. And it also means you don't have to move your barracks for an add-on on this section of the map. You know. Yeah. So, let's keep going here. It's not the worst thing. Uh, you can deny scouting too with the barracks at the front. It's just really my preference. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fun when <laughs> when they get something to pick off your stuff there. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often in Gold League, so that's why I haven't stopped doing it. But yeah. But when I play some high level players, they usually pick, pick them off. Like if I play Protoss, they like to get a stalker to pick them off or something. Yeah. <laughs> so your, your mule drop is a little late. Yeah. You've had it for a little bit. Do you need to get the expo going? Now the reason why your expo is later than his is because your guest guys are I should have been at 15 supply. Yeah, yeah. And this is right. There was a, a bit of freestyle here, so. Yeah. I will. If you, if you also get the factory before uh, the reactor, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Uh, it just means you'll be really alien heavy. And uh, you don't you won't have very many marines to help yeah. defend against early things like banshees or stuff. So yeah, you see bio, two tech labs, double upgrades. Yeah, exactly. Armory, two factories, not bad.
It's actually not a not a bad opening. Um, it's it's a good way to get a lot of Hellions out kind of early. It, with yeah, the I, blue flame too. I think it gets four or six. Yeah, I guess not get. I have these four, but I managed to do some damage with these four against this marine. So I just harass them a bit. Yeah. At the ramp here later. Hellbat drops. So scary. Yeah. I should definitely do that more. Especially if I go make a can wait a couple of headbutts. Yeah, he likes to clump up his marines. Huh. You it was about an even trade though. Yeah, but I don't think he wants to go before his medivax now because it's probably stay there. Yeah. Since they're all on low health, almost. <laughs> a few of them. Let's see. Uh, oh, also, since this guy stays on almost pure marine, the trades are terrible for him. He, I think it takes like five bases. I stay on two pretty long and take a third later. Yeah. You seem to be uh, in a really great position right now. There's nothing too terrible to point out except uh, supply drops. I mean, uh, supply depots are kind of your bane this game so yeah. far. Yeah. I'd also get the attack upgrade before the armor upgrade. Okay, yeah. Uh, in any situation for TVT. Okay. Is it different in other matchups or...? In TVP I like to get armor, but that's only yeah. with my recent strategies in TV. Uh, or I, I'd like to go attack as well, it just depends on what I'm making. If I'm going like... If he has a lot of zealots, I'll go armor. Okay. Because zealots really... You already yeah. do a lot of damage as a mech, but zealots do like two hits, so you prevent two damage per swing. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but... You have a good no. third command center timing. Your upgrades aren't going so hot. Yeah, I kind of added the gases too late, so... And I forgot to add on here. You don't have too much map control. I, I like the sensor tower, but I think... Uh, the reason I had I two Hellions, but he killed them. I had two here. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that. Yeah. I don't like the sensor tower here, because if you notice, half of it is cut off. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's if true. you put the sensor tower, like, right here, at the bottom of the ramp, you know, yeah. your siege can tanks can still fire at it and defend it. You can see a little bit more, uh, a lot more spacing out, actually. And uh, part of your third, and you can just get a lot more utilization out of it. Like it does, it's okay to drop it at the bottom of the ramp as long as your siege tanks protect it, and you know he doesn't have siege tanks. Yeah. You can also be I used to like bait him to attack it, and then he takes damage. I remember that you actually said that in one of your videos on YouTube I watched earlier. But yeah, that's a good point. Because they really helped me a lot. There's a good defense on drops here later. Yeah, I, I love sensor towers. I I me get too. them in the front against Zerg as well, just so I know when they come. Yeah, me too. So let's see here. I like your factory count. You should get one more reactor. There it is, and one tech lab, so very good. Uh, the sensor tower here is good, but again, you could lower it a little. Like if you watch at the radius, if you put yeah. it like right here, it'll watch a lot more. Yeah, exactly. And this attack is really bad on his part. Yeah. He's losing. He gets a, a few hellbats. I don't think he gets a single tank from me, actually. Yeah, and it's the tanks he really wants to kill. The hellbats are dirt cheap, and. Yeah, hellbats I don't care about. Oh I have my so goodness. many minerals because I'm, I'm not used to making and such. So the hellbats I can replenish easy. Yeah. And, th and that's one of the beautiful things about mech is that a lot of people don't know how to engage it, especially in low leagues, so it's it's an auto for your win if they make a move like that. Because right yeah. now, you could pretty much walk to his base and put your foot in his face. Yeah, exactly. Like, so many things. Yeah. 
too. <laughs> Let's speed this up just a little bit. Yeah, when I play bio or marine tank, I play mostly marine tank. Then I know like you have to try to catch them on signals. Yeah. To be able to do any damage like to his tank. So you're getting the gas geysers right away, that's good. Lots of mineral line. Or he has three armories here. You see? <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Tries to counter my main clip. I guess he wants to go air in transition. I'm not sure. It's he crazy. You do need uh, something here for drops. Right. I don't know why it's not letting me ping. I think I forgot how to ping. Alt G. Yeah. It has to. Be. I thought that was another way. Okay, Control Alt. Okay, see, that was stupid of me. I just forgot how to ping for a second. Um, <laughs> I've been using it the whole time, but then boom, it went away. So uh, once you're on third ba three bases again, you know, especially against Bio, you want a missile turret ring. Yeah, um, I, I also kind of overreacted to just to this drop a little bit move my too much of my army yeah because he comes for an attack here at the front door but uh, it's okay still <laughs> yeah he moves into a lot of your tanks yeah I got lucky so should have moved straight for my natural instead you're taking a quite a bit of time to actually respond to your SCVs being idle yeah there you go so yeah, the missile turret like, ring, I would put like one here, here, and then here on the very outer edges. Yeah. And then in the main base, like one here, here, and here. Yeah. And that just covers the most edges and makes it a little bit... Uh, if the medevac, if you get lucky and kill a medevac on the way in, that's always worth it. And then yeah. weakened medevacs means they can't retreat either because they have to take out the missile turrets before they can speed boost away. Yeah. And here you kind of saw something on this side. Yeah, I didn't have my one time left there as well. Uh, and uh, there I, s I, s I saw a marine there. Is uh, right. a mech Terran also? If you don't have like total map vision, you want to rally inside of your base. Just in case he like comes up the front and steams through you, you know? Uh, that it gives you time to see chat. Yeah, I rallied to here, to next to the tank. Oh, there you go, yeah. yeah. I just saw the first few units I coming saw out. a little dot on the sensor tower. Yeah. And I thought it was a drop, but it wasn't. Yeah, you d you're doing very good then. And here's a siege outside of space. Nice. Cutting them off. And he runs into it again. Here, here's one problem though. You need to keep like half of those hellbats near your tanks. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I know. He could, if he had marauders and stuff, I guess he would get more lucky. Yeah, if he had marauders, if he split them a little better, and if he dropped some on top of your yeah. tanks. Yeah, I think I ran some back because I see all the medevacs. I thought it was a drop there. Yeah. Oh, he, I, I was about to, but he GG out. So yeah, it was, it, overall it's it's pretty good. Um, you're hitting a lot of the good positive benchmarks. I, I'd say your macro is probably the more limiting factor in your mech play. Yeah, I in know. TVT. <laughs> It's not normally that either. Normally it's like positioning and things, but your positioning was pretty pretty good for your league. Yeah, I had, I had uh, two Ognis from mm. Roots to help me out with my marine tank play and such, so I got a, I had a terrible win rate in TVT. It was like 32 percentage for a while, uh, and after he helped me, I now I have 73 percent. So. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, now I think this is one of the more fun matchups, actually. It's, I actually agree. I, I've been enjoying TVT a lot lately. Yeah, it's fun when you when you win a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, but, no, but I, I really like to use tanks now. So. Yeah, and mech is more like an art. Um, I was telling this Protoss player earlier, he's like, please, no, no hour-long game. I'm like, I, I love it. Or he's like, 40 minutes or hour long. And he's like, you don't get bored of it. And I'm like, no, I just love building the base, building, like, seeing the vision and, and expanding this army, you know? Yeah, I'm kind of the same there, so. Yeah. I liked SimCity 2000 uh, original SimCity when I was younger and <laughs> stuff, so. 
Yeah. I'm kind of the same there. So, uh, I think TVZ is now the point you want to focus on, correct? Yeah, sure. So, because I, I tried, uh, like a few times, I did uh, an opening from your guide, I think, mm -hmm. TVZ guide. Uh, but, uh, let's see what kind of build it was here. If you have yeah, a replay of it, that would be great. And then we can pinpoint what the problems would be. I don't think I have a replay here. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of new to make TVC completely. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of go through it from the beginning anyway. Okay. Because I, I think I played it a few times only. And uh, I, the problem is I don't know, like, the timings to attack and such in TVC. Not with Mech, at least. I know with Bio, but... So I don't... Um, if I stay too long and he suddenly uh, like has tech switch to, to Brugloris and such, uh, yeah. So it's more a thing of when to move out and when to try to do damage and such. Okay, so um, let's cover some of the basics. Uh, we're just gonna hop in this replay, and then while it goes, I'll tell you um, how I understand TVZ Mech to go. And once you have an understanding of that, it'll be much easier to figure out what to do. Yeah, and this is also uh, a pretty good build that I like. If the Zergs don't get a lot of static defense, it's much stronger I feel than how Bat drops. Uh, even if they get static defense, it's almost always going to do to, to do some damage. Yeah. Excuse me. So um, some things I I think about TVZ Mech, and that's like, if they have Zerglings, I have to have Hellbats. I have to yeah. have a lot of Hellbats to match Zerglings and Banelings until I get plus three attack then I can cut the Hellbat production in about a half or a third. I still need some because they one-shot Zerglings, but yeah. I don't need that many. Yeah, and it is it is crazy. It's sexy. It's it's good, though, because uh, it allows the mech army to be a little bit more uh, volatile. So yeah. another thing about mech is that the more <laughs> orbitals you have, the more SUVs you can get rid of, the bigger your army composition. This is true overall in bio as well, but it's even more so for mech, because mech is this type of thing where the more siege tanks you have, or the more Thors you have, or the more Hellbats and Ravens and Vikings, the more explosive your damage is. Yeah. Uh, unlike Bio, if you this is what that's what you'll see this game too is you'll see like thirty workers and a huge mech army, and uh, that that's uh, a fun thing in this game. So against Zerglings, you need some Hellbats. Against Roaches, Widow Mines are very good because they're the same range. You need to prepare against Drops, but Widow Mines are pretty good against Fat. If you have Widow Mine Burrow. Uh, you need siege tanks to defend most all-ins, and you need uh, anti-air to defend against mutalisks. And more often than not, what they're going to throw at you is either zerglings, bailings, roaches, or mutalisks. Yeah. It isn't until the mid-game where they decide I want to add swarm host infester or Lord or swarm host infester or nida swarm or drops, you know. And then in the late game, they go like, okay, I'm going for Lord or ultra or viper. Yeah. So your strategy, whatever, however you make your strategy, has to go. In the early game, I have to defend against Zerglings, Swatches, and Bailings. And what does that? It's, it's Widow Mines can do that, Bunkers can do that, Siege Tanks can do that. But um, I chose to go with Widow Mines, mostly, and a few Siege Tanks and one Bunker. Because in the mid-game, they can go for Mutalisks, which you need anti-air. And if you already have Widow Mines Burrow, Widow Mines uh, can help stop the Mutalisks. Yeah. Now, 12 Mutalisks will kill one Widow Mine before it can fire, but it won't kill two. Yeah. So that's that's always good. You get like four or five Widow Mine hits and all the, on every Mutalisk, and the Mutalisk block is gone. Yeah. And uh, it's the same thing for drops. You can reposition the Widow Mines. Same thing for Nidus Worm. If it gets up, you can reposition the Widow Mines. And in the late game, uh, when they go for Infestors or Swarm ho or in the mid game, when they go for Infestors or Swarm Hosts instead, you have to kind of move away from there and get a few more tanks and so on, but Widow Mines are pretty much your early to mid-game defense, and that's why yeah. you see me opening up Widow Mines and TVZ. Uh, and then you can kind of exploit their army, they kind of treat it like make play, you can do the reversal. If they go for Blurred Lords or Swarm Hosts, you can go around their army, do lots of harassments. Uh, you, you definitely need some Ravens in the late game, so it's okay to throw them in on the mid-game. Uh, if they go for, like, Vipers, if, if, they, if they don't go for Brew Lords, I mean, if they don't go for swarm hosts or infestors, widow mines are always a useful unit that you can use. Yeah. So um, it's pretty much 
to what my strategy revolves around is is the widow mine until I scout otherwise. So it's the same wall off. Um, this game was also played today on stream. Yeah, I, I yeah. think I didn't get to watch the end of it, and I really wanted to because it you macroed like hell, both of you, in the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I had to leave with my dog for a walk, and I didn't get to see the end. Kind of sad. <laughs> well, you get to see it now. <laughs> yeah, it's the point. It's really good. So, uh, one of the things you'll see in this game, as you mentioned, is we macroed like hell, and that's where I, I threw down two command centers inside of my base. And the reason why I did that is because I know if it gets to a late game army, my I feel like my cons my positioning and control and, and sense of the game is so good that I'm just going to win. Uh, I don't think many people can match me on that. So that's why I'm so confident that when he took his third base that I scouted, I threw down two extra command centers because I knew it wasn't going to be a cheese. And even if yeah. it was, I still had my widow mines. You can see I kind of wall off, here's the factory, so I like to get my factory before my second base in TVZ, uh, just in case there is some kind of heavy cheese, kind of scouting him out. Uh, here comes the command center, now you want to put your, after the command center you throw it down, you can make a call, okay I need a supply depot, I think I blocked myself a little bit here, but you need a supply depot and you need a bunker, you need a bunker at the front because Zerglings can be at your base pretty soon if he wasn't getting his third base. You can see yeah. his, uh, his queens are almost done, which is definitely enough time to build a zergling and it'll already be halfway across the map. Uh, even a few zerglings. So you want to get your bunker down and reposition yourself behind the bunker. And you also want to get... See, yeah, I do supply block myself a little. And I do scout that um, it's not aggressive play, so I halt the bunker for a second. And I make two supply depots. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, I understand what's going on. I don't need to do that yet. So that's why I do the supply depots. I use the barracks to wall off, which means I need one less supply depot. Uh, you have to wall off by 6 minutes and 8 seconds, the fastest circling, um onto base that I'm aware of can reach your base. So by the 6-minute yeah. bunker, uh, by the 6-minute section, you have to be behind the bunker and you, or inside of it. And uh, you have to have a wall off so the zerglings can't surround the bunker, and you can just use SCVs to repair it. Yeah. Now, at about 7 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, various cheeses can start really hitting you. Yeah. Which is why we get a single widow mine. We can go up to two widow mines. Uh, you can see I'm getting an armory right now. So you can either get a tank, or you can get widow mines. The siege tank is stronger against roaches and banelings. But the Widow Mines aren't that bad if you split them up properly. They can still handle it, it's just a little bit more difficult. And you can see by positioning the bunker there, I can lift it up and hit the Overlord and try to snipe it. I can't right now, but I just go back to the bunker. And I move over my factory on top of the tech lab that I made from the barracks right before I moved it. Another reason why I get two Widow Mines is uh, once I have them and there is an Overlord on that top little thing, or close to my base and I can't quite get it, I can burrow them right close by and then lift up the command center and then they'll take a lot of damage. You know, the, yeah. the overlord will die. And two widow mines split up is also a great way to stop circling attacks. But yeah, let's speed this up just a little bit. So here's a starport and I'm getting widow mine burrow and you can see I just hit that with his overlord so now uh, I can't watch my front. So the reason why we get the starport is because we, now we can do some Widow Mine drops. We drop down the two command centers, we feel really safe. And the moment we do that, we immediately grab the gas. So that, uh, and he does spot both command centers, by the way. I checked the vision after the game. Yeah. But um, we, we want the gases because our minerals are going to explode, and gas is the most important thing. So now we go ahead and do a drop. I have an SCV over here, kind of scouting him out. But um, it, it doesn't really matter how much damage the drop does. It's just to kind of keep him in his base. We want to keep it alive. The general rules of my TVZ still apply. You get one extra base. In this case, we got two. Right after you have your third base, you get your two gas geysers. After your two gas geysers, you get your two factories. The reason why we're getting a fourth factory is uh, so fast is because we're going to have an extra income. Yeah. And uh, at the nine minute or in between the 8 minute 45 second mark to 9 minute 30 second mark we want to start an engineering pay and we also want to start plus attack because we want to get up to plus 3 attack for circlings. Yeah. So everything has been met. 
You can see my Widow Mine drop is kind of doing damage. Uh, we've killed six workers, which isn't bad. Uh, definitely puts us ahead right now in the game, in the macro count. Yeah. You can see he has everything back at home defending. He's not attacking me, or he's afraid he's going to lose some stuff. I, I even sent out a single Hellbat drop, like just one Hellbat in there, just to kind of see what I can do with it. Also, um, a general rule is you never want to lose the Metavex. Yeah, okay. They're they're very expensive, so... Yeah, exactly. Now that my macro has exploded, and I'm only making Widow Mines, because uh, it's the mid... It, we're about to enter the mid game. So up until about the 10-11 minute mark, you're in the early game. It's about the 10 minute mark, you're in the mid game. And uh, the mid game only lasts a little bit. <coughs> the mid game lasts until they have Hive. The moment their Hive finishes, you're officially in the late game. Yeah. So uh, and while, as long as we're in the mid game, we only need Widow Mines. And we use this situation to power down even more factories. We can even go up to seven or, or nine factories, two at a time. Uh, why? Because with the excess amount of Widow Mines and the one tank lap, we can get siege tanks out of the one tank lap. So they can't just stand a, a far enough away from the Widow Mines and fire. They're going to take siege tank damage. You know, in case if they're like hydras, and widow mines are the same range as roaches, and they're about the same cost. Yeah. So definitely, uh, we can just survive off the widow mines as long as we produce enough and get our third and fourth base much easier. And uh, players, you can see us doing a little bit of damage here, but not that much. So uh, players have a lot of issue, uh, especially lower leagues going into going into defending against widow mines. Uh, if they don't know they're there, they'll just move into them. You'll win a lot of games in the early leagues just by players walking into them. Yeah. So, it's always fun to abuse units like that. Like the Colossi in the High Templar. <laughs> 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 right? I mean, yeah. in lower leagues, they're like... They're oh, super great. strong, yes. Yeah, it's the same thing with Widow Mines. I've cursing a lot about High Templars. I'm finally getting good at... They were pretty good at dodging storms and such, but... Yeah. Damn, I was frustrated for a while. Yeah. Tell you that. <laughs> and it, it's the same thing you can do with Widow Mines against enemy players. So. Yeah. Um, so, so you can see, I save the mana back, I just drop off the Hellbat and go, it's 100 minerals, what can I do? Actually, I end up doing nothing, but I did scout that, that he was still on a lair. So if we look at my vision, I send it in, I see a lair, and I see the Hydra. So I know that it's Roach Hydra. Yeah. So it's, it's an okay scout. It's not that bad to move. I see how far creep spread is. Um, we don't definitely don't want to lose too much. We're actually still... He's lost 50 more resources than us. So... We're still in a good position. Now back at home, you can see I'm starting another factory. Uh, this I'm going up to 7. Or 8 right now. Sorry. And I got another command center. So you want to focus your, your defense in one point. The only reason I'm double expanding is because I know he's got everything in his base, I know what he has, I feel pretty confident. I'm making siege tanks again, and I'm making a viking to scare away overseers, and I have a lot of widow mines that I can pump out just constantly, constantly, constantly. So, yeah. with these widow mines, like, they're, they're not that good against infestors. If you have them split up, though, it takes a lot of infestors to kill them. You know, they have to cast, like, infestor and to for them to, yeah, to fire their missile. And swarm hosts are good because they get them to use their charge on locusts. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you, when you see swarm hosts, you throw down a few tanks, just enough to survive, and then you get a lot of hell bats and or hellions and transformation. You move around, and the reason why we get hellions is because we want to save the gas to get ravens, and ravens are really good against swarm hosts and red lords. So we knock out two things he can go. Uh, siege tanks are pretty good against infestors as long as you have target fire them down. Ravens aren't that bad against infestors too, as long as he doesn't fungal you. Uh, if he eats hunter yeah. secret missiles, he dies pretty fast. Uh, so we can we can go into a few things, and we want to focus our our defense. So by putting an orbital command away from his army and a planetary fortress closer to him, all we have to do is make sure that the bottom base is more heavily defended than the top base. Yeah. Yeah. So we only need one planetary fortress, and this allows us to really defend our bottom base w without worrying about our top base dying because it's a planetary. So uh, we can get four extra gas, and gas is the biggest thing, especially since we have so many factories now. Gas would just help so much. 
So let's speed up here just a second until we get these bases down. You can see he tries to do a little counter attack, but we don't mind to hold it off. And okay, here we go. So now I don't know why I accidentally. Oh, I didn't cancel that. It's a replay bug. So now we get our gas geysers right away. Our gas income is skyrocketing. We get a tech lab on our starport. We're about to enter. See, his hive just starts. So at, at about 13 minutes, a hive can start. If they're being really aggressive with it. Normally it's 16 minutes. Otherwise, than that, it's like 20 minutes if they're really late. But uh, you yeah. notice that at 14 minutes, when the hive is building, I'm getting my uh, my Raven energy upgrade, and I'm beginning Raven production. So I'm preparing for the late game while I'm still in the mid game. Uh, the the mid game is for another, you know, hundred seconds, ninety yeah. seconds. And since we have all this extra gas uh, and a crap ton of minerals, we make like a supply depot wall. We get the sensor towers. Uh, we put one min uh, so a widow mines in front of each base. You know, just so they can shoot at things. Send a few widow mines here to harass. He ends up finding those, which sucks for us. But yeah, um, they're they're dirt cheap, so it's okay losing four widow mines. Two sensor towers in the front. Now I know really where he attacks from, and we're starting up two more command centers because we have so many resources, and we can stay on four bases for a long time, that we can get rid of SCVs, yeah, and start trading them. And this command center is meant to expo. This command center is meant to expo. These are meant to be orbitals. So I just oh, build okay. them next to the expos where I want to send them. Uh, we have siege tanks, ravens. We got two missile turrets just in case of vipers or mutalisks. Uh, you can see, you know, I have my third base, so missile turret ring. Yeah. So I just down a little. Our plus three attack is on the way. We got blue flame. We get infernal preigniter, and we got tech labs in all our factories, because we we have so many factories we don't really need a reactor. Yeah, I get it. And then once the hive is done, you know, we really get two extra starports, four more ravens, and we're making a lot of hellions. So uh, as, as I mentioned, we have enough tanks to survive, and now we're going into raven hellion. Uh, just so we can get a critical amount of ravens and still get a lot of upgrades uh, and the hellions are pretty mobile they're not that bad as a buffer we try to sneak this base which isn't bad uh, it gives us extra gas for a little bit so we're on even bases with the zerg definitely not something he wants and his creep spread is phenomenal though yeah it's <laughs> so we're I'm pretty good sure literally jealous of zerg that way the creep spread is yeah to have the kind of vision the vision too, it just uh, it can do so much for you if you have a lot of vision. Yeah, I know. And you can see we're. One we're second, I'm a bit of a, like a slow player. Yeah. So I, I really need that vision. As long as I have vision, I often do pretty well because I can prepare in time. Yeah. So I'm a little jealous of the creep. <laughs> Me too. That's one of the reasons why I've wanted to play Zerg. Is if you noticed, I, I like to get a lot of vision in all my games. Yeah. So uh, we see that the Hellions are moving around the map. We're scouting for new expos coming up. Um, I think I'm going to send some over here real fast. I have the transformation and I have blue flame, so they can do okay damage to expos. Uh, I'm sending SEVs out to the middle of the map. Some from each base. I want to get rid of them. And you can. Um, I, I'm at a lot of SEVs. Pretty much. I still don't know how I have so much. He's killing a few of them. But ultimately you want to drop down to like 30 SCVs. Yeah. Uh, maybe even lower. Because uh, you need, like, I have a lot mining gas. And he finds this base, which sucks. I can't go over and defend it because it's so far away right now. And I'm not ready to move out, I'm just getting some more units. Uh, because I sacrificed some of the SCVs, but it's one of the good things about that is I got gas for there for a while. I have a little bit of a gas bank, and the SCVs yeah. had to die anyway. So it just feeds my army a little. So from here, it's just kind of building. Uh, let's get into a little bit more of the positioning of what's going on. We got some Thors along in the late game, just in case of Ultra Arp or Lord. We got some Ravens, Widow Mines. With the ravens, you know, you can. It's easy to kill. 
uh, creep. Make sure that your ravens and vikings are not on top of your widow mines when they land, when they burrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for <4G>. GG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Exactly. <laughs> he does a counterattack here. Um, I just send all my SUVs to repair the planetary. I actually make the second orbital a planetary, and I send my reinforcements to kill the roaches. So let's yeah. just slow down here, because we got two armies moving. So while this one moves over here, we're defending that attack. Uh, we tell the ravens that the, you know, at the, the just barely popped out to make hunter-seeker missiles on the roaches, because they're clumped up. The Thors to attack. It does die. The Thors are pretty good. And here we're getting into position to attack. Sorry. Now, my thought process here is, okay, I see investors, I see vipers, this is dangerous. Um, I'm also, you know, this base is pretty much defended. Once the planetary finishes, it will be over. And uh, it also helped us get rid of some more SCVs. Now we're down to about 34. If you hit, like, control A, army supply, uh, it's 148 to 113, so our army is much bigger, but some of it is back at home, as along with his, but uh, some of our more expensive stuff is home, the Thors and the Ravens. But we also take out one of his bases, that's much, much worse for him, because uh, he didn't actually force us out of that position, you know, we're still, we can still mine from there, we just have to send workers down. Yeah. From here, he's, the base is completely gone, and you have to be careful against infestors and and vipers. Um, I put some siege tanks here on the ledge. Sorry, right there. Uh, and th theoretically, or realistically, they're a little bit too close to each other. Yeah. And I try to move up, uh, I try to move out into like of an arc, so he can't just uh, get on top of me. So I wanted to siege my tanks and then move back, but I got fungals on them and blinding cloud. Borrowing the uh, widow mines, or you know, sending them to the front now, throwing down some hunter seeker missiles, borrowing the widow mines. He does have blinding cloud on my siege tanks, but it's not yeah. the biggest deal. Uh, we do have three siege tanks not doing anything here. I thought the battle would be a little closer to home, but uh, the, yeah. I guess now that I look at it, that was a bad positioning on my part. Uh, we got two Vikings, only two Vikings to kill, you know, the Vipers, and we burrow. The widow mines is a is a overseer is kind of far away, and he loses it. Yeah, at my level, there is not a, anyone using vipers yet, so that's really good for me. <laughs> yeah, that that is good. They're kind of the bane of mech right now. Oh, look, these siege tanks do something. That's awesome. Yeah. So from here we go, okay, what type of army did he have? Well, he had Roach, he had Viper, uh, he had Infester. Uh, I mean, he had Roach, Hydra, Viper, Infester. So he's spending a lot on spellcasters. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we need a lot of brute force, but it has to be a little bit mobile. We could still get Widow Mines, but we have to be careful because he's got the Infester. So we need something that a fungal can survive for a while to migrate out of there and still be okay. So Thors are kind of the answer there, and Ravens. So the Ravens, while my units are fungal and in place, can do a lot of splash damage. Thors are there to absorb a lot of the damage. Whatever I can't afford in Thors and Ravens is going into Hellbats, not Widow Mines, because it's much easier to fight off this army with Thor and Raven than Thor, Widow Mine. Yeah. Or than Raven, Widow Mine. So that's kind of what we're remaxing on. We move our siege tanks here a little over. We just want to, uh, we know we probably can't make it back, because then he'll just uh, attack us. And we scan, we see the Birdlords, and we're like, crap. But we, it's too late to retreat, we just send back the Ravens after Hunter Seeker Missling. There's a uh, bad rally going on. Uh, it happens. <laughs> yeah. The Mines are still here, and I sent the Thors back here. Not sure we, we tried to get that base. And you can see, like, if you look right here, uh, all the Widow Mines blew their charges on the Infested Terran popping out. Yeah. So now they're useless for the next 40 seconds. And, uh, yep. Yeah. And since we have so many tech labs, 
throughout the, you know, because we have so many factories, we can make seven Thors at a time. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine making like uh, seven Immortals at a time or seven Colossi. Yeah. And now that we don't have that much gas, we prioritize seven Hellbats at a time and we're getting some Vikings. Uh, you want a few Vikings peppered in so they can get the Corruptors, not the fire at the at the start with the ravens and we need a few of them to manly target fire the bird lord I do make a bad engagement here now uh, one I'm not in the explosive payload which I should be in two I lose most of my ravens I get some okay hunter seeker missiles on them but if you look like he's at 196 now and he drops to 168 which is great, but most of my army wasn't there yet to back them up, so now I've lost them. And yeah. uh, I need to back up immediately. I mean, he still has a uh, blinding cloud and fungal, so. But I decide here, okay, um, I'm gonna try to get this base. That didn't go out so well. And I'm like, alright, I don't have a lot of workers, but I still have four bases. I still have a lot of gas. So since I don't have so many workers, I'm gonna try to get a really, really strong army and overwhelm him. And uh, I can take advantage of the fact that he has two spellcasters, because one of the things that can really blow blow me up is mass, mass Birdlord. Yeah. And the way you stop mass Birdlord is ravens, but I lost most of my ravens, so that, that's kind of dangerous on my part. But he's almost maxed out, so he can't get that many more. And a lot of his supply is in Corruptors, which doesn't do anything to our ground. Hydras, which are kind of weak. Uh, I mean, not like, they're weak defense-wise, so once we reach them, they're dead. And then yeah. infestors and, and vipers, so he has to micro perfectly to kill our army because he's using a lot of supply in heavy spellcasters. He's got four vipers and he's got eight infestors. That's a lot of supply in spellcasters. Yeah, absolutely. And he's making 15 workers. So uh, he now has, his army is now officially weaker than ours in terms of army supply because he's got an extra 20 supply in workers. So not only is his composition more difficult, uh, with that style anyway, than raw brute force. Like, uh, one thing we could throw in is, like, a ghost to help us out. But, yeah. or a battlecruiser handler. We don't have that tech at the moment. So we just have to go off, okay, uh, use our mules instead of SUVs advantage and pump out the power army. They're all in explosive payload. I mean, um, you know, the... Single shots. Yeah, the single shots. Yeah. Because of bird lords. Yeah. And there's not too much to splash, so... We're getting quite a few more Thors now. We're just powering it up. We're getting our armor upgrade. Though that armor upgrades matter a lot against birdlings. Uh, we get a lot of hell bats because if the birdlings are dead, the faster the birdlings die, the less Thors are trying to target birdlings. So yeah. the, the bird lords die faster. And he doesn't have too many bird lords. We have, uh, like almost three times as many, or probably three times as many or more uh, Hellbats than Birdlords. Yeah. So they'll die really fast. And just to emphasize on that, I also made three Medivacs. I believe I did. I don't see them. Or, I was thinking about it, I guess. I saw. I thought I saw them on the production tab. And I keep trying to send bases around the map to just drop mules on. And now I'm sending Hellions out. Um, we still have a decent mineral bank, so we can afford to lose these. And I just use yeah. them to wipe out the creep in this space so I can come back and get it. But he's smart and he sends a queen over there to make uh, more creep tumors. So now we have this powerhouse army. If you look at our army supply, it's 162 to 138. So we have 24 more army supply. We also have a better composition. Uh, he really wants ultralisks against hellbats. And he wants blinding cloud against thors. So, um, the ideal composition for him right now is Ultralisk uh, Viper. Okay. Uh, and how we would counter that is Thor Widowmine. Yeah. But, um, so it's really heavy counter dependent. We spent the whole time making this, and he doesn't really keep a tab on our army. So now we can go, okay, um, you don't have any Ultras. Hellbats are really good when you don't have Ultras. So we're just gonna, and if you keep the army supply tab up, you can watch how much stronger our composition was. We split up our army a little bit to get kind of a, a concave. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, so the fungals aren't aren't that bad. He pops some infested terrans out. Just a few to sort of shots, and once we're a little split up, we go ahead and move in. We control manually control the ravens to be careful to micro against the infestors. He does get a good shot off on the ravens. And we drop some point defense drones for the hydras. And we go in and we hunter secret missile as Bridlords. And what we can, and we drop more point defense drones against the hydras. So our ravens are able to nullify the hydralisks. And since we stayed back so far building the army, they had a lot of energy, so we got the Hunter Seeker and Point Defense Drone. And the Thors, they're just not enough Brilords. Like, all the Hellbats are dead. Uh, the buffer is gone. The yeah, but yeah, all the Thors uh, left, almost. Yeah, almost all the Thors. There are some really weak ones in there, but we're just remaking our army. And now it's kind of like a death march to his base. get this going here. So, back home, um, we know that he's got a lot of tech invested in debris alerts, so we're just getting three vikings. We're getting a few thors and a few more hellbats. Uh, we have this command center here floating, so even though he's got it, want something at every base, we can still drop our command center like right off the creep and mule from a distance. It's better than nothing. Yeah. And it's just mules, so if it dies... And over here he tries to make uh, another last stand. One of the things you can do as a Mecturum player is that uh, you can send your rally points to your army and make Hellions if you have the transformation service upgrade. Like, if you only lose your Hellions, which is mostly what I lose here, I can just remax on Hellions because uh, I still have my main army and they'll get there pretty fast because they're one of the fastest, faster units in the game. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Still working off the same army supply, so he's trying to remax again to kill us, but we still have a huge, huge lead on him. Throwing out another Hunter Seeker missile, but he spends the energy. So we throw down some auto turrets. And he's trying to retreat and pull back. So let's see here, yeah. Making a lot of Hellions now, seven Hellions at a time and rallying them over. You can see the, the nice little train going on. Yeah. And then, see, I, I landed this on the edge here. And I'll drop some mules there in a second. Um, the reason why we went for the heart of the Zerg's base was once you get rid of his tech structures, uh, Zerg's like to rally in one place in between all their bases. Once yeah. you're in between their bases, it's much harder for them to hold you off. And then once you're really at the heart of their base, killing all their production, uh, they can't make any units, and it doesn't matter how many bases they have if they have no units. Uh, yeah, that's what I do right now in Tuesday. I always try to go for their tech and stuff yeah. to kill it off. So they can try to put up a new spawning pool somewhere else and stuff, but it's it, they, uh, they won't get far. Yeah, it takes a long time, and it buys you a lot of time. So the harass should always be at the expos, and the death push should always be at the main. Yeah. Sending more stuff over. We're maxing out again, so even better. And we're getting plus ship weapons. We already have the armor, and the ship weapons are good against bird lords. Okay, and you can see that I did like a heavy mule there. So if we check our income as the mules come in, um, you know, even though it's at a far distance, we had so yeah. much energy saved up that it, we we're reaching like 2k income. We're not yeah, surpassing him on income. Two, yeah, 2,500 almost. Yeah, it would be closer to 3k or 4k if it was right there, you know? Yeah. And then here he makes the last stand with the Broodlords. But I just have way too much. The Broodlings die instantly. And then that's game. Do you have any questions about this game? I don't think so. This is really good, actually. It covers a lot of points. Uh, you're safe against a lot of things. The weakest thing for Terran Mac to deal with is super fast Um that's, that's the hardest thing to deal with. But if you have Thors and Hellbats and Vikings, it's not impossible. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So as long yeah, as. Yeah, because that happens to me once. Yeah. 
It happens to me on occasion too, and I'll at least do it on occasion. It, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen to me. But um, as long as you remember the basic things, like uh, what units he's getting, and you have to keep a tab on how many he gets, and what's his total army like, and where he is, you can build around that. See, um, uh, Terran is Terran Mech is very reactionary. You can have a strategy, but your strategy has to be reactionary to what he does. Uh, to what yeah. they could do. You have to cover all the bases and then go from there. Yeah, I, re I really like that because I, I as, since I, I, I said I'm kind of a slow player, so I yeah. have to like make better decisions and react better to what's happening, so I try to scout a lot. And, and uh, I really like Zerg in that aspect as well because they can switch tech really fast uh, uh, and has the kind of vision they can try to counter you at all times and mm. with uh, mech if you can do the same it would be really fun actually yeah, and, and one of the things that is great about mech, and one of the reasons why I feel it's it's the best strategy to use up until you're a professional player, is because it is up to the opponent to break the mech Terran player. And, yeah. and for the mech Terran player, if you have a great strategy, you, it doesn't have to be your own strategy. It could be, let's say, Flash makes this awesome, amazing strategy. I would I would use it every day if it was really good, you know? But the thing is, is that these strategies that Mech has to come up with is um, is the same thing like Bio. You just get things at a specific time that could counter other things. But with Mech, it's, it's much easier to do because your units are much more versatile. They're stronger. Um, they're better for defense than Bio. You know, Bio is meant to be a little bit more for offense. Yeah. Absolutely. So a as a Mech player, if you have a really good strategy that hits all the points, like the strategy that I just showed you, there's only a few things that you have to watch out for. And as long as you know what to look for, and your opponent doesn't, you will win every game if you play it right. Yeah. And the lower league you are, the much harder it is for them to know how to break you, because they think, oh, I, I read on the forum, Swarm Host beats Mech, I'm going to go Swarm Host, and you see a Swarm Host, and you're like, well, according to the guide here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make Hellions, and I'm going to make Ravens. I have Hellions, I'm going to send them to this base, and this guy's like, oh, he's got Hellions, whatever, oh, he's killing my expo, that sucks. Or, or, or he made Hellions, but I stopped it, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, ten Ravens come in, and uh, while he's not looking, and you Hunter Seeker missile, different swarm hosts, never the same one, always different ones. Yeah. So they can't just up and run away one of them, but you hunter secret different ones and he loses his army. He's like, what just happened? Yeah. Why, why, why am I not breaking him? Why is this not overpowered? And there's the same players that go like, oh, he's mech, I'm just going to make immortals. And then all of a sudden I have widow mines and EMP and banshees. And he goes, I don't know how to beat you. Because if you don't know how to beat mech, you won't beat it unless you're really lucky. Yeah. So that's that's one of the reasons I love it, is if you don't know if the most of the lower league players don't know how to beat it and they can't, um, you know even though they you, just because you're in lower league doesn't mean you're not smart you you have, can have, you can have more game knowledge than me, uh, it just means that my execution is a shit ton better, and yeah. in the lower leagues, their execution isn't nearly as good and you still need to have good execution to beat Mech. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool. So that, that's why I always... That's one of the reasons I'm doing this, is that unless you're planning on going to be a pro player, mech is a strategy probably best for you. So, and, and not even that, like, mech still works in TVZ on Perly, still works in TVT, it's just yeah, they, they don't mess with it as much. The game versus, it was versus Demaga and... Uh, I can't remember now. Was it for GG or was it? MVP? Yeah. <laughs> On you, Kirk. Yeah, I saw all those games. They were really good. I was uh -huh. really mad he wasn't making Widow Mines, though. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen it on your stream. Uh, yeah, it was such a long game and it was really back and forth that uh, they mined out almost everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Kinda cool, but he won it. He won it anyway, in the end. Yeah. Back a few times in both army supply and such. And what Demaga should have done is lost a few of his workers and build an even bigger army because MVP was working off like 20 workers and he was able to max out. Yeah. So that's a huge army. That's yeah, why Demaga that couldn't break him is because he had too many workers. Yeah, it was it was really cool actually that game. Yeah.
It was also one of the games that I got really interested in to start playing more Mac. Also, just to change up my gameplay a little bit. Mm. To like be able to do both by um, Mac. Alright, well, it seems we still have half an hour left. Um, what is it you want to fill us with? Do you have more questions, another replay maybe to go over, or anything specific? Yeah, maybe I can try a build, and you can coach me through it. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. So, we'll have you face against the AI, just to kind of see how it goes. Um, do you want to, like, are you trying one of my builds, or are you trying to do a build you know and see if I can tweak it better, or, or what would you... No, we can. You can coach me through one of your builds, so... Okay. So let's go ahead and get a custom game going. Put it on. You can put it on an Elite or something. Okay. Well, it really all that matters is the build, so... Yeah, okay. Get some some pressure at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, pick a good one. You know, if you have that drop the AI, you'll win instantly because it tries to defend it with workers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So they all oh, actually. actually you, can't, you can't try any strategy that depends on helmet dropping because you will win. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm trying to find a good one, but. Here is one. Kind of a bigger map, but. It's okay. So the biggest thing is getting to the mid game. So we'll do this for about 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, anything after that is really scouting. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put him on medium. Pick him Zerg or Terran. Uh, Zerg. Yes. Terran, I feel pretty confident. So. Okay, so Zerg. We're gonna have him focus on, say, an aggressive push. See if you can hold whatever he throws at you. Actually, if, um, let's let's make a melee. <laughs> if we do the bill right, you should have yeah, no problems. Now, what do I want to do? What type of strategy? I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna make him pick, but let's pick this one. Oh wait! Oh, you can see it. Dire. Don't yeah. like. No liking. You can choose liking this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to let the Mecha Messenger move to you and use like one SCV to guide you where to put stuff or point things out. Oh, you did not add us a referee. Okay. Was, uh, no, 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 I'm just on your side. So I can really... I, I don't need to see what the Zerg is doing. Yeah. So I'm just flying over to your base. Bring my one worker over. <laughs> Just moving in that corner. But let's, uh, do you recall most of the Zerg opener? Uh, I have this, uh, your safe TVC opening. Okay. Like, that you posted on YouTube before. Okay. Well, we're gonna... Let's focus on the one that I just told you. Uh, it's kind of more of an updated... Fr I mean, it's it's a different strategy. Yeah. Um, it's the one that's easier to defend with. It'll give you a lot more wins in lower leagues. If you ever yeah. sit, face the same person twice, though, you can alternate strategies and they'll never know what's coming. So when do I take gas on this one? Was it 15? You take the gas at... I'm trying to remember. 13 supply. 13, okay. Because you want your factory up kind of soon. Yeah. Ah, uh, CB. I stole your minerals. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so go ahead and drop the yeah the barracks, and then you can actually make the gas at fourteen. That's fine. Is it distracting having an SCV run around? Nah, I'm not sure. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, you got your gas geyser down. Your goal is to right, only get up to cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your goal is to only get up to four marines and put them in a bunker at the front. Yeah. You don't need any more than that. I 
veto this map, so I'm not really used to it. I think I vetoed it as well, but it, it shouldn't matter too much. It's just uh, the build order. Okay. So you want to make marines right away? Yeah. Yep. Rally them to the front. Because you want to deny overlords if they come. Uh, you want to deny scouting zerglings from seeing your wall. Not that they're going to see anything, but you know, to make them go, ah. Uh, so yeah. was it factory first or was it expansion first? Factory. Your first 100 gas goes into a factory and you should have the 100 gas before 400 minerals. There you go. Do I add a bunker now? Or? No, now you get a command center and then a third supply depot. Yeah. Or you can get the third supply depot first if your macro is a little bad. Command center almost there? Yeah, wow. Looks like you might have sent an SUV a bit too early. Alright, now. Oh, it's vertical spawn here. I, I thought it was like the ladder version. Uh, yeah, but we're. Uh, it's a four player thing right now, so they can spawn anywhere. Um, yeah, so you want a tech lab on your factory? Yeah. And you want an armory, and you want another gas. Or oh, actually. I get it on. Yeah. And once you have the factory, I mean the, the tech lab and the armory going, and the second gas, you want a bunker at the front. Now you can delay the second gas a little bit. Oh, they're coming already. Uh oh. <laughs> so remember, you gotta get that bunker. Yeah. And, that, and what you can do in this situation is you can also drop a bunker on the high ground. Yeah, I will do that too. So, you so try, try to, to get out the tank now? Oh uh, yeah, or, or wait a mine, but tank in this situation would be better. Oh, they're here. Oh, uh, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I think we're screwed. I let him hit my... That's okay. So what yeah, you just do I is you... Up, no yeah. What you do is you uh, just put the tank a little bit higher so the riches can't fire at it, repair, yeah, and lift up the command center now. Yeah. And fly it back and cancel the bunker. Oh, and yeah. move your tank a little up, because uh, he might hit it. Okay. Might be uh, too close. I can't repair it, maybe. Ah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a seven rush. Um, yeah. You you I held it off. Yeah, yeah you, you held it off. It, see, you, you, it's just an example of the strategy. You can hold it off. But uh, do you want to try a different one? Kind of yeah, sure. try to build order again with a different type of rush. You gotta remember, you gotta scout them kind of fast too. You have to see what's coming. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it, it was a, 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 like the ladder rush, like two. Okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and drop out of here, okay? Yeah. We'll do one more attempt and <laughs> we'll uh, survive the cheese. And, well, you did survive it, you know, and then go from there. Yeah. Um, but if if you do it like 100%, you should not have any. No, because it, it wouldn't stay as my CC. It would go for my main. No, no, I mean like a, if yeah, that's true. But if you had like um, if you got the bunker down in time and the siege tank or the widow mine. Uh, yeah. and you, you had the SUVs done below, that wouldn't have been an issue. Also, you would have scattered it, so... Take it, take some some other map that I know better also. It's oh, okay. Difficult. Let's take a... Uh, you can take the new derelict uh, watcher. Derelict? You can exist to it, yeah. I don't know... Give me the second. gold map. The new star station. Similar. Let me, let me get the exact watcher. name of it. Oh, it, okay. So I spelled it wrong. The party. Yeah. It's weird. It's not showing it. Uh, 
derelict. Like this derelict. There we go. Let's try this. Pick a different cheese for the Zerg. Or maybe the same. Oh, how do I add more people to this? There we go. No, I'm up server. No, oh, there we go, yeah. I switched it. And now it's there, yes. So let's pick a different one. Now remember, you have to do it correctly. Um, if you don't scout the roaches, you have to go for the widow mites. Uh, or if you scout a bailing bust, you can. You have to go for this the siege tank as well. So uh, if it's not a seven, if it's not one base, go for the widow mines. Unless it's a what's it called? Heavy aggression. So if if you don't expect them to attack you, widow mines are great. Otherwise, yeah. get one siege tank minimum. Yeah. Sound, sound good? Okay. So. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Let's see this. So the beginning is definitely you have to scout. Yeah. Let's take a look here. I can see what the Zerg is going to do. I wonder if I can move him. No, I can't. Huh. That'd be interesting if I could play from observer mode. Yeah. <laughs> see everything you do. That'd be a great way to mess with your friends. So you can delay. If you're Go ahead. Referee, you can change game speed at least, I think. Can you? With plus and minus, yeah. But you have to be a referee. Oh, there you go. Observer. So, yeah. Oh, you can do it. So, so. Are you referee or observer? I think I'm referee. Yeah. <laughs> is this too fast or? This is good? No. <laughs> Alright. No, it's slow, right? No, it's fast now. I think I'm Yeah, no, 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 it's slow. I had no idea. Can I make those no, SCVs? Is no, it? Must be slow. Oh, yeah, I think so. No, I'm hitting the plus key. Okay, yeah, so. no, okay, maybe this is confusing. <laughs> Sorry. I can't force so much. <laughs> so, um, if, if it's a really big bust, you can hold it off with Widow Mines. It doesn't hurt to drop a second bunker and move uh, some of the Marines over there as well. Yeah. Um, but Siege Tanks are better off at holding early all ins, so if you're really yeah. not 100% so sure. I like getting like one or two siege and just be safe. Yeah. It saved me a couple of times. So. The only thing it's not strong that if, is if you go for two early siege tanks, um, it makes you vulnerable to like two base mutilisk where they yeah. rush for it. But that's also why we get Widow Mind Burrow to really help against that. Everything's going pretty great for you. Zerg strategy is pretty crazy. I like how the observer drone scouts. Yeah. Try to drop your factory a little bit away from your front so they can't see a factory if they scout it. Okay. Um, it's not something I always do, but it's a good habit to get into, I should do it more. You need another marine. Yeah. Uh, you need to, once you reach about 300 minerals, you need to send the worker out. And you can get another marine as well, and another SCV on the way there. 
There you go. And now you want a bunker at the front? Or yeah. a supply depot first, actually. At the front, though. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or you can make them at the same time, that's fine. One supply depot, one bunker. And get a tech lab on your barracks. Should I build it from the outside, in, like this? Yeah. Uh, okay, you drop. Yeah. Yep. I should have started the reactor early. Yeah, you could have started a little bit sooner, but that's fine. Yeah. So, are you expecting any cheese from him, or what do you think is going on? Uh, true down as You did see double gas very early. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So it's um, it can it's definitely a tech build. But you're not quite sure what it is, so to be safe, around the f six minute mark, I would throw down the scan, so your next yeah, scan. I'm, uh, I'm for this. Uh, you don't want the reactor though, you want a detect lab. Okay, it's thought you said widow mines. Yep, you got one widow mine at a time. You get the tech lab so you can get the widow mine burrow at the same oh, time. Okay. You want a, your command center to be an orbital command. It's okay though, you can make, have your, uh, don't make another barracks just yet. Not oh. another factory, you mean? No, sorry, not another factory. Okay. So you want to, yep. So you want to finish all your wall off, remember, by 6 minutes and 12 seconds. You want another command center. So you got to finish your wall off by moving your, your barracks down there. Or you only need two supply depots, not three, to finish it. Yeah. Should I go here? No, a little bit higher up. Because I don't know how to place. This. I need this first. Too. You can do it like right, right up against it. It helps if you get the corner one. Or or there you go, yeah. Or you send the barracks over first. Like uh, you need two factories, uh, a command center, and your three geysers. Because your macro is slipping a little bit. Yeah. What did you say? I need two factories. Yeah, two factories. Okay. And uh, you want... Are you, wait, hold on. Oh, are you, uh, just let me ask you a quick question. When you build your stuff, how do you send your SUVs to build them? Uh, I select a few and build them and shift click them back. Okay, so uh, a better way to do that is to just mouse over all your SUVs in the mineral line or just a few of them and just tell them uh, don't move them but just tell just issue the command to make a building somewhere and it'll only send an SUV for every building you tell it to make yeah I know I don't know why oh okay this. just wanted to make sure What's sorry like uh, release shift too fast or something yeah okay so are you ready to go back yeah yeah Okay, so remember the golden rules though, because we're making some mistakes here. You want to wall off by 612, 608, then you want to get a third command center, then two factories, then three gas. So yeah. you want to get your, your command center and your other two gas really fast. Okay? Yeah, okay. You ready? Yeah. And you want to scan his base as well with uh, one of your mules. Oh, so it's muta. So what we want to go from here is get an engineering bay, produce more widow mines. And um, so we got to put our widow mines where the mutas are most likely to be annoying. And that is close to the mineral lines and close to your production facilities. Yeah. So th the three in the front, we can move like one here. Can you see the ping? No. Okay. We want to move one at your expo. Uh, above the mineral patches, you know, so if he flies in from that angle, we want to move one by your production facilities. And uh, you gotta make one tech lab so you can get the widow mine burrow, yep. Yeah, and one. Well. Gotta get an engineering bay too, though. It's That's yeah. really important. Yeah, so spreading the widow mines will be good. And then putting all your guys in gas and dropping some mules now. Yeah. Are these placements good for the window mines? The ones at your front, you don't really want there, because you can just repair okay. the bunker, which you need to do now. Repair, repair! Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. 
So the bunkers can, are usually good against mutas. They don't really try to pick out bunkers unless they have a lot of them because they don't want to lose the gas units. Oh, I need an armor to drill up. Yeah. Too. Yeah. If you like, if we didn't have the reactor in the tech lab, you would have had that by now. Yeah. So you're you're pretty safe against mutas. You can see that's like a two base timing. That's why we get the engineering bay at about eight minutes forty five seconds to nine minutes and thirty seconds. And uh, you have a little bit missed micro on your refineries. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to say I, your... I have huge problems listening and doing it. Ah, uh, that that's fine. Yeah. It happens. You don't really want to start a siege tank. You want to start a Thor because it'd be some mutas. Okay, but I don't have my armor yet, so I can't them. Yeah. I didn't know you needed an armory for the widow mine upgrade. Yep. That's the, that's one of the reasons why we get it so soon, and you have a lot of energy on your command centers. Yeah. I, I should transfer some SOEs too. Yeah. I uh, yeah to transfer some, and uh, make like three more. Factories. You actually have still 200 energy on your main command center. So you want to drop all those mules, yeah. There you go, that's going to skyrocket your income. Okay, and I got Taurus. Yep. And then you also. Can I throw Hellbats to an hour? Yeah, you can now throw Hellbats in as well. Another thing you normally want to do is see when you see the music you want one missile turret in each mineral line, but you also want one by your production facilities. Yeah, okay. And you have a lot of saturation. Uh, you transferred a few too many to your main, so just uh, to your expo, so just rally to your uh, main base and make SCVs there. Don't worry about it. You have a. Uh, Decent amount. You could probably fly your third over and. So how many tech labs and reactors should I get? Uh, I think. Uh, right now you wanna you don't wanna place any tech labs or reactors yet. Okay. You're not quite ready to get them. You see that he's I switching it to Roach Hydra. So, yeah. Okay, he's coming. I think. Yeah, he is coming. So you wanna move uh, your widow mines down. You're missing some supply depots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are the widow mines? <laughs> They're pretty good at holding it off, as you can tell. Oh, you still have like two more widow mines in your main. I could help. I yeah. mass repaired the tour. <laughs> yeah. You still need to get drilling claws too. So overall you held it off. Yeah, he's got a lot more supply than you. Uh, and he yeah, did before I the battle as well. I'm behind, really behind. No, it's it's fine. From here it's more of what you scout type thing. Um so what I would do is I would really focus on looking over that uh, the replay I gave you and write down all the timings and your goal is to match them every game and I would just spend like going against the AI not play like a full game go up to like the first 15 minutes and try to hit yeah. every timing and then yeah. just do that over and over and over again and that should make you once you really get the first 15 minutes down the rest is much easier you know yeah so do you want to keep playing out this game or no, it's okay. Okay. I'm already behind. <laughs> <laughs> I never lost the elite AI. Well, oh, I don't think you're gonna lose. You were behind, no, no. but I don't think you're gonna lose. Yeah, uh, me neither. It's pretty easy. He would like to still walk into your widow mine, so. Yeah. He would have won, definitely at least by that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we were good to trans. You were good to suggest a transition into. Hellbats because we saw mutalisks and then once we saw roaches and hydras we wanted to switch back uh, when we scanned and then when we saw the infester we definitely want to go okay um, no no more widow mines but we still need like a few to pepper out you know 
Yeah. So overall, still pretty good. But that's what I would do, is kind of like homework or, or yeah. something. It's just to really learn the build order and go into heavy, heavy with it. Because once you have it down pat, it shouldn't be a problem TVZ for you anymore until at least your next two promotions. Uh, I don't think so. so. Right, yeah, you... so this was, was a little bit different than your old uh, safe opener. Well, there's two of them. Um, one, okay. of, one of them is aggressive with Hellbats and defensive with Hellbats and a few Widow Mines. And this one is aggressive and defensive with Widow Mines. So okay. the biggest difference is that the one with the Hellbats is designed to do a timing push to where if they didn't make Roaches, you will flat out win the game. Okay. Because yeah. the other one, there, there you went the Command Center first, I think, before Factory. Yeah. So they both complement each other pretty well. Um, I, I made this one because uh, the other one had some weaknesses, and that's the only weakness was um, mass, mass, match roach. Yes, you could defend it, and you could trans into, into it, but it was a little difficult, and you had to scout it. And then, okay. but it was really great against Zerglings. And what this one, the new one, is is it has a little bit of a problem against Zerglings and Banelings, but it's really good against roaches. Oh, okay. So, okay. and it's just kind of you use which one depending on what you see a lot. If a lot of Zergs in your level are using just nothing but Baneling buffs over and over and over again, you want to go with the Hellbats. Yeah, a lot of Baneling buffs, a lot. Some Roaches too. But yeah. I think it's mostly Baneling buffs. They like blowing up stuff. Yeah, and then you can go with the Hellbat build or you can just get the Siege tank one or two before and then you're completely safe. And then yeah, go straight into right. the Widowmind build. I had a really fun game, game Bing and Bust with me, and I, uh, it was the first game of today, and I had to play for a few days because I was sick. So I kind of messed up and uh, let a uh, few too many circlings into my main. <laughs> uh, and he got like, I, I think he wasted a total of 40 circlings and, uh, uh, and banelings in total. And he got into my main, and I only lost 10 workers, and it was a one base push from him. Yeah. So uh, I actually got out, uh, got out ahead of him, <laughs> and uh, after that, I I think I because I thought I was uh, behind. I thought he expanded behind it earlier. Hmm. So I was seeing. I, I watched that uh, MVP all in he did versus Stefano with yeah. Hellbat, Marauder, and such. So I just went for that with all of the SVs for my natural, and I scattered him before that he. Uh, went for a Nidos, so, uh, but I already have supply depots all over my base so I could see every corner. So I waited till he got all his units into the Nidos worm and then I attacked him with this all in, right, uh, with all the SOEs from the natural too. He got pretty angry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when the enemy players get angry. Yeah, it was like, oh, F yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, same. Yeah, and, Thank uh, you so much. Yeah. I have some uh, really good things to think about when I play my car. I definitely hope that you you feel very much more confident now. So yeah, because there was a few <laughs> things, especially in TVC, I wasn't really sure what, what counter what and such. Yeah. So but, uh, yeah, it's much better. In TVT, I feel really confident now, especially when uh, I would try to get more Hellions into early game instead of Hellbats to get more of the map control and such. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna fun. go the ladder and try it out. Okay, <laughs> I must go. My child's waking up now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And, um,. Definitely more videos to come. Sorry that the the videos about uh, the replays we sent in are a little delayed. Um, I'm I'm still gonna get to those. Don't worry. It's just uh, a few coachings piled up and really active at home. So I'll definitely get to it. Uh, keep sending me replays, guys, and I will try to do as many as I can. Very, 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 very soon. Peace out.